Hey there, my name's Drew Brashler, and in this video, I'm gonna be talking all about the Midas DL16. If you're brand new to my channel, I'm all about helping you feel more confident in your production gear no matter where you're starting from. So let's go ahead and dive in. So like I was saying, this is the Midas DL16, and this is identical to the Behringer S16. The only difference between the two of them is the Midas version has upgraded audio quality, but you can use either the Midas or the Behringer version with either the X32 or the M32. So if you do happen to have an X32 and wanna have some upgraded audio preamps, then just go buy a DL16 and plug it into your X32 and it'll work great. So let's go ahead and dive into the actual function of this and what this does for us. So we have 16 XLR inputs here, and then we have eight XLR outputs here. And so this is identical unit on the bottom. So this is going to show us our back of our unit. So we have an IEC cable and a power switch right here. On the very far left, we have a USB port. This is for upgrading the firmware of this unit. We then have our AES 50 a and B ports, and this is going to be how you actually get the information from this to talk to either your X32 or M32. So you do wanna use a shielded Cat5 cable, and it is recommended that you use the EtherCon barrel end with that. In this video, I am not going to be using that, so please don't yell at me. Next thing that we have is our alternate port. This is for plugging into a P16D uh, and then sending out to P16 units. It's kind of like this. Now, why did I say plugging into a P16D? Well, this port doesn't have power over ethernet, so it can't just power one of these. So if you do happen to plug in the alternate port into the back of this, you will need to supply power. And then you can daisy chain and go on uh, with your day with that. But if you plug it into a P16D, that's the distributor for the alternate, then you can actually power multiple units off of that same box, which is great. We also have ADAT outs. So one cool function of this is you have the option of these ADAT outs. And these ADAT outs allow you to either multiply the inputs that you have in here and take them into a ADAT and then get that into a, a DAW if you wanted to, or you can have extra outputs via your AES-50 outputs from your board. The very last thing that we have is MIDI in and out, and I'm not gonna be talking about that at all today. So we can see that the front of the unit has the XLR inputs, but then it also has a control section up here. So we have our gain button here. Now the gain button allows us to change the gain of our inputs. And then we also have our phantom power button, and then we have a config button. So um, the next thing that we have is our adjustment knob here, and then we have a monitoring headphone jack and volume knob there. So I'm gonna go ahead and talk about how to actually use this control section. We have this selection knob here, and we can select through all 16 inputs on the front. If we press it, we can then change to the outputs of this, and then we can also go to the ADAT outputs, and then if we press it again, we can see the P16 outputs, or the alternet outputs. So if we're on an input, we can select any of our inputs. So if I was wanting to change the gain on input one here, what I can do is I can press and hold gain, and then this will show us our gain that we have of input one. And so if I wanted to have more gain or less gain, I can go ahead and change that here by just pressing and holding gain. Once I have the selection that I want, I just simply release it. Next, if we were wanting to turn on phantom power on say input three, I would go ahead and go to input three, and then I would just press 48 volt. And then we can see that our phantom power light is turned on on input three. To turn it off, we can just hit it again. If we were wanting to listen to these things, we can use the same function. So we can go, say, if I was wanting to listen to input 16, I can go ahead and go all the way over to input 16. And then I need to plug in some headphones into the jack, and this is my volume knob for those headphones. Now, if I wanted to listen to an output, I would just have to simply press this, and now I'm on my output. So if I wanted to listen to output seven, I can go ahead and scroll over to output seven, and now I can listen to it. And then, like I was saying, ADAT, one through 16, and our alternate, which is the P16, one through 16. 
The next thing that I want to talk about is the configuration of the DL16. And this is going to be the same if you have the Behringer S16. So you can do the same thing. So if we want to change the configuration of this DL16, we just have to simply press and hold config, and then we can rotate this button. And then it's gonna go through all the different selections. Behringer does have a manual, and it does show you the configuration options that this has. The most two popular options that I'm going to be seeing out there in the real world is going to be either this one, where it says one through eight, or this one where it says nine through 16. Now, why? Well, this is one through eight, which means that when you're sending AES-50A on an X32 out, um, then and this is plugged into that A port of your X32 or M32, then that means that the first eight channels of your AES outputs are going to show up here. But if you had a second unit that was daisy-chained through the B port of this top unit, and you were wanting to have 9 through 16 showing up on these ports, you would need to change that on the physical unit here. So to do that, we would press and hold config and change this to 9 through 16, which means now that output 1 is output 9 on your AES, and output 8 is actually output 16 on your AES. So if you have these two linked together, the top one you would want to have in 1 through 8, and the bottom one you would want to have 9 through 16. And that way you can have 32 inputs between these two stage boxes and 16 outputs between the two sets of eight on the DL16. So let's go ahead and actually plug this thing into our Behringer X32 that I have here, and we can get this thing going. Like I was saying, we do need to have a shielded Cat5 connection, and it is recommended that you do have the EtherCon barrels. I do not have a cable right now in my studio that has the EtherCon barrel, so we're just gonna be using this. So we want to go ahead and plug this into A port on our DL16. The other side is going to plug into either our A port of the X32 or M32 or the B port if you want to have them show up on your B port. Today, I'm going to be having it plugged into the A port on my X32. The very next thing that I want to do is if I'm wanting to daisy chain this unit to another unit, I want to then take the B port of my top unit and then plug it into the A port of our bottom unit. So I'm going to actually do that now is I'm going to take our cable and I'm going to actually rotate these. So give me one second. Okay, here we go. I have my two units now plugged in, and I have taken the X32 on my A port of AES-50, plugged that into the A port of my top unit, taken the B port of this and plugged it into the A port of this unit. Now, like I was saying earlier, I need to set my configuration on these so that I can have my outputs 9 through 16 on these bottom outputs. So to do that, I'm going to press and hold config, and I'm going to rotate this to 9 through 16. And I'm just simply going to release it. And we will notice that out plus eight is lit. And that is the way that I want it to be on the bottom unit. If I also was wanting nine through 16 on the top unit, I would also do the same thing by changing this to nine through 16. And if I wanted to have a weird way and have the one through eight be on the bottom, I can have this be one through eight and then this be nine through 16. It's really up to you what you want here. So I am going to have it so that my top unit is one through eight and my bottom unit is nine through 16. So let's go ahead and jump over to the X32 and finish out our routing. So we have the Behringer X32 here, and I have my DL16s plugged into the A port of this X32. And we can see up here that we have a green light, which is good, and it says DL16 plus, which means that there are multiple DL16s plugged in to the A port of this console. So we can go ahead and hit routing and see that there's multiple devices here, one of two. And we can also see it uh, by going to our setup and tabbing over to preamps, we will see that if we rotate all the way down to AES-50A, we would have a couple devices here that we can scroll through. So let's go over to our routing. So if I'm wanting to say have all 32 inputs coming from my DL16s to my X32, I need to go ahead and change the routing of my console to reflect that. So I want to go change my output blocks here to be from AES50A 1 through 32. 
So now what this means is that my 32 inputs on my DL16s that I have are replacing my inputs of the X32. So none of the X32 inputs are going to be functional right now because I'm simply taking all of my channel inputs from the DL16s. If I was wanting to take a few inputs from the local console of the local in, I would want to be using the user input section and you should check out my other video about that if you want to do that. The next thing that we want to do is we want to change our card routing because if we don't change our card routing, anything that we try to multi-track is going to be coming from the local inputs, not from our stage boxes, which would be bad because we don't want to record nothing. So go ahead and tab over to card and we're going to change this to be AES 50A 1 through 32. So this now means that all 32 inputs from our DL16s are recorded on our card, as well as going into our console inputs here. So we can see that I have AES50A selected on all of my inputs. The next thing that we want to do is make sure that our outputs from the X32 are showing up on the DL16s in the correct way. Now again, I was setting my outputs 1 through 16 to go to those two DL16s. 1 through 8 is on the top, 9 through 16 is on the bottom. So I want to make sure that my AES50 output routing is set correctly. So we can see here that my AES50A, which is gonna be the A port of this console, is outputting outputs one through eight on one through eight, and outputs nine through 16 on nine through 16. And then it's duplicated on 17 through 24 and 25 through 32. Now, what are outputs one through 16? Well, if you continue to tab over, over to our patch out, it's these 16 outputs that we're talking about. So any of the outputs that you select here are going to be showing up on not only the outputs of the back of the console, but also the outputs of the two DL16s that we have. If we tab back over to AES50A outputs, we'll also notice that 33 through 48 are selected on P16 1 through 16, which is going to be our P16 or alternet outputs. So any of all the 16 outputs that we select here would then be going to the P16 alternet output on the DL16s, and it would show up on both of the ports on the top and the bottom unit. Now say we wanted something different to show up on our XLR outputs on the top unit of the DL16s. We want to remember that the top unit I had selected on 1 through 8. So if I was wanting to maybe have my aux outputs that I have on the X32 to show up on the top unit of the DL16s, I would simply go to AES50A port and go to my 1 through 8, and then I would simply just rotate this down until I get to my selection that I want for instance, aux out, one through six, and monitors. So if I went ahead and did that, that means that my aux one through six outputs, as well as the monitoring section of the Behringer X32, is going to the top unit of my DL16s. So if you wanted to have a wireless in-ear system that was connected into your stage boxes that were up on the front of your stage, and you wanted to have that wireless unit be your monitor QMix, now all we'd have to do is grab seven and eight on the outputs of that top DL16, plug in them into an in-ear transmitter, and now we have a pack that has our monitor section of the X32 going through that. Now for those of you that have a compact version of the X32, you might want to use 16 inputs from your local console and 16 inputs from a remote stage box. So in this case, I'm going to remove my second DL16 really quick. So I'm going to just go ahead and turn it off. So only my top DL16 is turned on. So if we go and look at my routing, I can see that DL16 does not have a plus next to it, as well as if I go to my input tab, I can see that my connected devices is one single DL16. So for those of you that have a smaller version of this console that doesn't have all 32 inputs on this, maybe you want to have those 16 inputs coming from your local and 16 inputs coming from a DL16. So to do that, we want to go ahead and select local 1 through 8 
and local 9 through 16. And this is gonna be coming from our local console. And then 17 through 32 would be coming from the DL16. And then we would want to go ahead and select AES50A, one through eight, and nine through 16, simply because we only have one DL16 connected. So we can see that we now have our local one through 16 on channels one through 16. And then we have our DL16 on AES50A, one through eight, and nine through 16, those are selected on 217 through 32. So when we're looking at our faders down here, we can have inputs one through 16, and then when we go to 17 through 32, we will notice AESA one through 16. So that's how you can get up to 32 inputs with a smaller form factor of the X32 or M32. I hope this video was helpful for you. Um, these DL16 sound great. So if you do want to have a little bit sonically different sound than what you have with the X32 and are hoping to have a little bit of an upgrade, check out the DL16s. They are a great way of getting sonically improved quality of your X32. And you can even have this as a remote stage box sitting up on stage with your X32 sitting at front of house. If you do happen to have any questions, please put them in the comment section below. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to my channel because I'm always putting out brand new content on the X32 and Behringer products, as well as other things uh, in the production space. But um, if you happen to have other questions on any other products other than this, and maybe have an idea for a video that you'd like me to make, go ahead and put that in the comment section below as I'm always reading through those comments for other videos that are gonna be helpful for you. So thank you so much for watching.